Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, so boy as usual, you already know what it is. It's been a while since I've made a video, but I'm super excited to be making this video guys because today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how I scan my photographs. Uh, this process has really evolved over time um, from using Epson scan to using Silverfast. As you guys know, I've been uh, working with Silverfast a quite a bit and uh, we actually did a giveaway uh, not so long ago for the Silverfast software, but with that being said, making the switch from Epson Scan to Silverfast has taken me quite a long time, but after using the software for over like, I think I would even say like four or five months, I've gotten to love Silverfast and the whole entire workflow. So today we're gonna to be updating uh, the last video. I'm probably gonna queue it up here and showing you guys my new process, which I'm very excited um, to share with you guys. But before we get started, we're gonna talk about all the things that I use for my scanning. So uh, the scanner that I use is the Epson V600. Absolutely incredible scanner, especially for 120. Highly don't recommend it for 35 mil, but it does get the job done depending on what type of quality you want out of your images. It does get a bit pixelated on the 35 mil. And um, yeah, I don't really choose it for 35 mil. But next thing that I also use is cotton gloves. I really, really love cotton gloves. Uh, these also help with cleaning the surface and uh, keeping your negative clean. Super, super helpful and handy. Um, yeah, I love them. They're super, super cool. I like the thick version as well. I don't know where I got these, but these are really, really perfect. They're really nice and thick. So you pretty much just, I'm gonna hold my negatives with these. And also, where do I store my negative? I have a binder, got it from the doll store. Um, let me show you guys right now. It's just like a normal school binder. It's not necessarily for photography. So uh, you're gonna notice that it overlaps quite a bit. But for me, it's not a big deal. I really like it. It's just a simple binder, but they are binders you could get for um, just specifically film. They actually get covered and all that type of stuff. And also use sleeves for all my negatives. When I cut them and develop them at home, I cut them and put them in here. So I think this is the one that we're actually gonna be scanning today. So little luxurious things that I also have is like a light table. Um, I got it on Amazon for very, very cheap. I'm not gonna pull it out right now because it's gonna take a bit of time. So I usually like to take a look at my negatives before I, I go over to the scanner. So um, I know what frames I wanna pick out uh, because not every shot is going to be sharp. Not every shot is gonna be interesting enough for me to scan. So uh, the light table definitely helps a ton with doing that. But okay, so last but not least, the scanner that I use is Silverfast 9. Uh, this is the newest Silverfast. The reason why I like Silverfast guys is because of the workflow. The workflow is super, super fast. Like it's so easy for you to just highlight multiple frames. But what I like doing, I'm gonna actually be showing you guys really soon is that I like doing one frame and then duplicating that frame and putting it onto another uh, photograph. And the other reason why, this is the biggest one really, they have some uh, color profiles. They have really beautiful color profiles for Portrait 400, Portrait 160, pretty much every single uh, film stock that you might be interested in shooting. And uh, that makes the job a lot easier because you're gonna get those base colors uh, to pretty much enrich your scan uh, right off bat. Just like very similar to like the lab, but except obviously you're gonna be doing this at home. So their profiles are pretty good. And uh, yeah, so let's get straight into the scanning guys. Okay, so I have a negative over here. Usually, if it's dusty, I just use my cotton glove and just run it across like this. I actually like placing my negatives flat onto the scanner. So the reason why I do that is I notice that it's a lot sharper. Uh, when I use the scanning holders that come with the Epson V600, the images don't come out super sharp. And also another reason is that I won't be able to get the borders. Sometimes I like getting borders, they're not that necessary, but they do add a little bit more aesthetic uh, to your photographs and show that people, you know, and show people that you're shooting um, film. The issues with placing it flat onto the scanner, guys, is that you're gonna probably be needing to shift it around quite a bit in order to get it straight. But um, over time, you kind of get to notice that there's a strip in the middle of the scanner and you go align your negative with that strip and it'll come out pretty much unlined. So that's a pretty cool trick for anybody that uses the Epson V600 and it scans flat to the uh, scanner. So let's put this inside.
Oh guys, so now we're in Silverfast. So my scanning options are really, really simple. So over here, we're gonna change it to transparency from any of these. And then after that, we're gonna change it from positive O oh, Kodachrome to negative uh, because we're sc I'm scanning a color negative film, which is C41. And over here, my um, bit, I choose 48 bit. Um, and over here, frame, I just do free frame. This is pretty much the frame over here. And in terms of my locations, I usually I usually scan it as a TIFF file. So I like scanning my photographs as TIFFs because I get a really high quality scan. So I'll be able to pop it into Photoshop and be able to work on the skin without having it look muddy and having it not be able to be adjustable. If you've ever, ever thrown a um, JPEG into uh, Photoshop or Lightroom and try to do crazy adjustments to it, you probably have noticed that it comes out muddy, but this option, TIFF option, allows you to just have a really high quality uh, scan. It's similar to pretty much shooting raw and being able to re retain a lot of that information when it comes to editing, post editing and stuff. So if you like post editing, definitely recommend scanning your photographs in TIFF. So over here, we're gonna have the location and obviously the format. The format is gonna be custom, but um, I don't really see why you should uh, pick anything other than custom, but that's what I pick. I usually pick uh, custom. And uh, in terms of presets, um, I don't really pick a preset. I just kind of set my um, my thing to 3000, my uh, DPI. This is just the, the quality that uh, you're gonna be able to get out of your uh, scan as well. I'm not too familiar with all of this stuff, but guys, but uh, I know my scanner scans up to, um, I think 6,000 DPI, I'm not quite sure, but um, a lot of these scanners only are able to go up to 3,000. That's the highest, going past that is just ridiculous. But uh, a big trade-off for getting a higher DPI, guys, is that you're gonna get a bigger file. But again, that bigger file is gonna be able to allow you to sort of uh, do a lot of work without having the image be heavily, heavily um, affected. But um, yeah, you don't really need to go past 3000 to be honest with you. So that's what I recommend. Um, but other than that, so now we're gonna actually do the scan. Um, we're gonna hit pre-scan over here. Okay, oh, yeah, so the pre-scan is done and it's not looking the greatest, but we're gonna get that all fixed up really, really soon. So we're gonna go into the negative fix uh, option over here. And in the negative fix option, uh, negative fix, we're gonna call it that because seeing negative fix feels super weird. Okay, guys, so in the negative fix option, we're gonna go on Kodak. And then from Kodak, we're gonna go gold because I shot Kodak gold. And we're gonna go 200. Um, the, a really cool thing about this, guys, is that we're able to like even try other, um, other selections, other presets that are in here to see what we best like. You don't necessarily need to go to like your, um, your, negative profile per se because you do have options to all these other ones so why not check them out right so we're gonna even go check out the portra and see if we get better colors from the portra um but right now the portra is not looking good again um because it's really made specifically for these uh these type of uh films it's going to really react wonky but sometimes you get the lucky one where you get better colors in another profile so um i always like checking because why not right uh so what we're gonna do over here is i'm actually gonna click on the one that i like from the 200 is this one over here and then what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna adjust the um the exposure but first let's go inside the image a bit more okay so now that we're in the image a bit more we'll be able to uh, make proper adjustments so now um, we're gonna just get the exposure down a little bit um, I do like overexposing and over here if you want to get your um, your graph you're gonna be able to get it over here like your curve graph so uh, over here I'm gonna be playing around with this and sort of be able to get a little bit more shadows out of here and um, lower the midtones a little bit over there. And also I like, I like cutting off my, my, my highlights a bit. Not by too much, because it could be a really, really bright. And we're gonna actually adjust midtones on the slider, contrast. It was a very contrasty day, but I don't mind adding a little bit more contrast to it. And we're gonna close that. And the other thing that I also like uh, to pull up is the histogram. I really, really love the histogram, guys, because 
it really shows you where things are peaking as well and um you could just play around around with it to get better exposure and to get better shadows and um all that other stuff that you might like better shadows and mid-tone details i noticed that it actually works quite differently from um the curve uh adjustment layer quote unquote we're gonna call it but um i like having deeper shadows because deeper shadows especially for portraiture it really really um defines the face a lot more and that's something that I really, really like in my images. So I usually get on the histogram. The histogram does that really, really amazing. So um, other than that, picture settings, I don't really mess with picture settings that much, uh, to be honest with you, but it's just other adjustments as well, like saturation and stuff. But um, I don't really like to mess with the saturation because the color profile already has um, the saturation necessary or needed for the scan. Um, dimensions, I don't really mess with that. Um, navigate uh, navigator I don't really um, mess with that either um, in terms of sharpness now right so sharpness um, sharpness we're gonna be uh, leaving it as it is I don't really mess with that either uh, we're gonna actually run that scan I'm gonna actually adjust this a little bit guys I'm gonna actually adjust this just a little bit more um, But yeah, so I think this is a really cool scan. This is a really good scan. Sometimes if I do need to play around with colors a little bit more, there are these other options over here like global color. Um, I don't mess with these that much, but you can actually add a little bit more color to it. So if I also add a little bit more color to this one, I'll probably add a little bit more yellows, but it's already pretty yellow. I don't really like adding this one. If you wanna not use that, you could deactivate it by just not clicking the checkbox and then it'll be deactivated or even Xing out of it but there are these options that you could use for better coloring but like i said i like doing my stuff in post production so it's a lot easier for me to do that but oh yeah so now that i do have this uh preset ready for scanning i can actually go on frames and duplicate that exact same frame and put it onto the other image and it will copy that setting this is huge this is a really big game changer, especially for somebody like me. By duplicating the image, guys, I'll be able to get the exact same settings that I got on that image and put it onto the uh, another frame. So this is what I mentioned earlier. This is huge because I get to save a lot of time when it comes to scanning. But for this example purpose, we're not gonna do a back scan, but the back scan option is here. I'm just gonna do a regular scan just so that it's a little bit faster. But that's pretty much that for my silver fast scanning process. Um, I know I did rush through the video quite a bit without mentioning all the knobs and where to locate everything. Um, a lot of people are already familiar with all these scanning softwares and they're pretty much very, very similar. And there are other videos out there that show you the whole entire program um, in depth. But um, if you do wanna see it for me, um, I would love to make that video, but comment down below because it would have to be a about 30 minute video to 20 minute video but yeah i really really love making this video guys if you guys have any questions about anything that you might have seen comment down below i'll try to answer as many questions as i can and if you guys really uh like this type of videos on my whole entire process comment down below um i'm actually thinking about doing a what's in my camera bag update uh let me know if you guys want to see that as well and if you have any video requests comment down below as well if you like the video give it a thumbs up it really helps the channel grow and um, if you don't like it give it a thumbs down thank you guys again so much for everybody that's been supporting me i really really love you guys i'm gonna try to make videos um as often as i can it's just that you know when i'm not feeling inspired to make anything i don't really feel like making anything and i'm trying to balance as well creativity and living life and exciting and living life and exciting but you get what I mean. But with that being said, it's your boy Shingy as usually. You already know. Thank you guys again. I love you. Bye.